You are listening to the Digital Parent Podcast with your host, Sed Lewis. Hey, parents, welcome to another episode of the Digital Parent Podcast. Now, this episode is all about how do we safeguard all of these brand new devices we bought for our kids over the holidays. And I thought it was a good opportunity to bring in my good friend, cybersecurity expert, Terry Cutler, who's also what we call an ethical hacker, which means that companies pay Terry to come in and help, you know, protect all their software, all their infrastructure, the system from other hackers. And on this show, Terry really gave us, you know, heads up on some of the latest scams that are out there that these predators are going to use to try to steal all of our kids' private information off of their uh, new devices that we just purchased. So I really hope you get a lot of good advice out of this episode. So, but before we get to it, a quick word from our sponsor, M-Spy. Parents, M-Spy is the ultimate monitoring tool for all devices. M-Spy remotely tracks GPS locations, calls, text, messages, WhatsApp, Snapchat, web browsers, pictures, and much more. With Inspire, you can also restrict unwanted calls, block websites, or even block apps. Go to mspy.com for more information. Hey, Terry, welcome to the Digital Parent Podcast. We're so happy to have you on the show today. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to it. Terry, we know you have such great expertise when it comes to cybersecurity and internet safety. And, you know, coming off of the Christmas holidays, we know that, you know, a lot of kids out there are very, you know, vulnerable to hackers. And, you know, we would love for you to kind of tell some of our parents, some of our audience, like, what are some of the internet scams that are out there that we need to be looking for in this holiday season? I think that one of the biggest ones is um, they're called knockoffs. It's where they're online and, you know, they see Gucci handbags or Rolex watches, things that are thousands of dollars for like 200 bucks. And, you know, they'll send the money and then they won't get their merchandise. Or if they do end up getting it, um, this guy can actually bring bigger problems later on. I'll give you an example. In some countries, there's um, counterfeit laws. So, for example, with Italy, you might be traveling to Italy and you've got a, you know, a knockoff designer handbag. Well, you can actually get arrested for having that bag. Oh, wow. Some of extremely strict. So we got to really watch out for those. So let me ask you a question with those knockoff sites. How do they lure people in? Are they on like Instagram with links or is it uh, their own website they have up on the internet trying to get people to buy merchandise? Yeah, there's a lot of things like, you know, Facebook garage sale, um, obviously Instagram as well. Um, There'll be, um, you know, somebody will buy one and they'll they'll share the post with all their friends and then their friends will share it as well. And, you know, the news just travels fast and everybody doesn't want to pay thousands of dollars for a purse when they can get a similar looking one for a couple hundred bucks. And and, and today, the, the, the scams or the counterfeit products are so well done that it's almost really difficult to, to know if it's a knockoff or not. Yes. And I think one of the things that even makes that more intense is that you have a lot of celebrities that are using knockoffs for videos and Things of that nature. So even people who have the money to purchase the authentic version are using knockoffs. Correct. Exactly. And 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 the same thing goes for um you know for for music. You know, a lot of times they're they're you know there's some free music websites. So instead of paying you know the dollar or two dollars from iTunes, they'll say, Yeah, download all this free music all you want, and then eventually they'll hit you with uh with a bill. Because you have you have had to enter your credit card information for it. So, Terry, how dangerous are those music sites? You know, you always hear about there are all these sites out there where you can just download a ton of free music for free. And, you know, people go on different forums like Reddit and other places to try to, like, download these torrent files. Yeah. How much damage can that cause? And I think that maybe something parents may not understand that, you know, we're buying, like, all of these new, you know, gadgets, devices, and kids immediately trying to download free information. You know, how, how much of a vulnerability are they going to run into with those types of sites? I mean, obviously, like, it hurts the artists, right? We all, we all know that. <clears throat> right. But what's happening now is that um, people don't realize that the ISP, the Internet Service Providers, are tracking their IP addresses when they're on these sites. So if you're going to download movies like, you know, Frozen or, or Snowden or these other movies, 
uh, sometimes you might receive an email that says, hey, you've been fl- your IP address has been flagged for downloading the copyright material. So if you're actually a distributor of this stuff, you could be uh, taken taken down and actually uh, get criminal charges on you. Wow. I mean, that's big because, you know, you hear kids all the time. That they'll tell you, you know, the FBI never show up at my door. You know, they're not worried about the little man, you know, downloading, you know, illegal music or illegal movie. So you're, you're telling us now that the feds are actually watching this type of activity. Oh, it's, yeah, it's actually gotten worse. I'll tell you a true story that happened to us. Um, <clears throat> I work for a private investigation firm, okay? So we did a takedown earlier this year where a person was pirating cable television across the world. He was, he was pirating a sports channel. And what was happening is he, he was charging $5 per month per person, per member. And this guy had over 20,000 members. So the sports cha- those, the entire sports package could cost you, let's say, $22 a month just for that package. Right. And you can get it for $5 now. So, and, and, all, and, and this obviously got the attentions of some major ISPs here in, in Canada. And this guy was able to, to cause that much damage with a $100 device that streams, mus- uh, streams uh, audio and video from the cable box to the internet. A TV decoder. Wow. So, yeah. So did they bring charges against that guy? Absolutely, yeah. That's yeah, good to know. Uh, that's, that's something yeah. I think parents definitely need to know that you know people are being prosecuted for this type of hacking that is going on with the with the internet with cable TV in particular. Absolutely, you you never you're never too small. Now, Terry, what about cell phones? You know, a lot of kids are just getting a new Samsung Galaxy or they get an iPhone 7. What are some tips for parents to, you know, to guard the cell phone when they open it up for the first time? I think the first one, don't get the Galaxy Note 7. Or is that, which one is the Note, the one that blows up? Yeah, that's when it explodes, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, we don't want that one. Right. Um, I mean, obviously... Having a cell phone is a huge responsibility, right? I mean, it's an entire computer in your hands. It's your life in your hands. Most people would, 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 would go nuts if they lost their phone versus anything else because there's so much information on it. So it's important that you obviously in, install the safeguards on it as well. Like, you know, make sure you have a passcode on there or use your biometric fingerprint. Um, cell phones can get viruses now. Really? So, how can, oh, they get, how can cell phones get viruses? Well, I'll give you an example. Um, you may have heard a big issue that happened with Apple uh, middle of this year with the uh, iOS 9.3.4. And there was a vulnerability in it which allowed um, attackers to take over the phone. You can listen to or extract all the text messages from it, uh, emails, uh, and other valuable information. That's why 9.3.5 came out shortly after that. And then you're noticing like a ton of new updates coming in almost every week after that. And it has a lot to do with that breach. Even Apple confirmed it. Wow. Yeah. So that debunks the myth that uh, iOS devices don't have viruses. Yeah, absolutely. Everything has. Everything can get uh, a virus on there. And it's these ones that, are, for us in our world, are called zero days. This is where nobody knows about this vulnerability, including the, the vendors. And hackers will be exploiting this information until until the, the, the vulnerability becomes discovered. And so during that time, they, they fly under the radar. And they can be hacking into all your systems, your phones, and get as much information out of it as possible. So when it comes to those cell phones, because, you know, most people tell you, as long as I have a password or I have some type of, you know, biometric fingerprint, I'm good to go. I don't have to worry about any type of hacking. Is that true, or should they add some type of extra level of security? It's definitely it's definitely um, a step in the right direction. You want to make sure that you have a, a very strong password, right? Passwords um, are, are like death to us because path, passwords are so um, out of date because passwords are something that you know. Right. Biometric is something that you are. Right. And right. When you have what's called a two-factor authentication, it's, it's something that you have. So you want to make sure you have a really strong password, something that's between 16 and 25 characters long. Now, I know what you're thinking, right? How on earth am I going to remember a password like that? Is this guy crazy? But you want to remember things like song lyrics or passphrases. So, so if you had a password like, I had a great day at work 2016, and you capitalized each letter of the word, it would take about 10 years to crack that password. Wow. So yeah, so if you replace the 
the O with a zero, the A with an at symbol, in that same phrase, it would take about 39 centuries to break. Until I actually hack the server in the back end. <laughs> that's why you want to make sure you have, that's why you want to make sure you have uh, what's called two-step verification. It's where you type in your username and password, and then a text message will come to your phone with a random code. You want to make sure you have that functionality involved. But I think there's something to- key that you just Sorry. said, though, Terry, about the passwords, because I think a lot of times people try to use very short passwords in order to re- remember the password, opposed to le- using those very long 25-character passwords. Or like you said, it's taking 30, 40 years for somebody to hack. Yeah, that these pass, some of these passwords. I know so many people use garbage passwords. They call them crappy passwords. And in like the comment I just mentioned before, if I'm able to breach into the server on the back end, I could see your username and I could see your password in a scrambled form. And in the hacker world, we can use an attack called pass the hash. Now, I'm not talking about the good old college days here. This is an actually attack where we take this username and whatever password you have here and pass it on to a server. And it's going to log me in as you without even knowing your password. Wow. So we want to make sure that uh, you have really strong passwords set up. And that two-step verification is very important there, too. So, Terry, another thing I wanted to kind of um, touch base on is, you know, a lot of times when you buy electronic devices, kids may not like it, it may not be working. So you return them to the store either for a refund or to get something else. Now, if the kids have already started using devices, they've taken out of the package, They've already put in their passwords, their personal information. What should they be doing before they actually take that product or that device back to the store or the manufacturer? Obviously, the biggest one is to erase the devices. Um, I've actually there was actually a real case that happened. I believe it was Staples. Uh, what was happening is there, there was a big promotion happening where you can bring back your old computers and get a discount on a brand new one. What was happening is people weren't bringing they're were bringing the computers to them um, unformatted. So the computer was exactly how they had it before they brought it to the store. And then Staples was reselling the computers with the personal data on it. Wow. So you got to make sure that you, you, you factory erase your computers or your phone before you bring it back. Yeah, especially with the iPhone. You can do a, a factory reset, and it's, it's a military wipe. So it, it, there's, I can't say there's no way to get it back, but it's extremely difficult to get it back. Then would the same apply if somebody has rooted their iPhone? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so when you root an iPhone, a lot of people ask this question and they don't understand what it means, is that you're installing a hacked version of the iPhone's operating system, and it's unlocked. So you can customize it. You can install apps from various locations. And when you do that, you break all of the security that's been programmed on the phone to start off with. So... That's how viruses can get, can get on there. We can break into the phone uh, and compromise it. So, let me, yeah, let me ask a follow up question to Rudy. So, if you were to root a device, because we know it's very popular with kids, especially kids in high school, when it comes to rooting iPhones and Android devices, do you also like destroy the like the manufacturer's warranty? So, if something were to happen, like what AT and T spread or whoever, you know what I'm saying? Would they would they value the warranty knowing that the phone was rooted? I'm not too sure about that, to be honest, because I think what happened is, let's say I, ro- I rooted the device and there was a problem. I could just reformat the phone and put the original operating system back onto it. Would they know? I'm not too sure. But obviously, if you brought the phone back rooted, uh, they, they'll definitely say, you know, you're on your own, pal. <laughs> right. Or I think, I think there's even a way now that the ISPs will detect if you've got a rooted phone and just won't let you onto the system. Wow, that's good information to know. Yeah, I, I'm not too. I'm not 100 sure about the um, about the uh, the ISP part, but I know that you know in the enterprise world, we we have what's called mobile device management solutions, and if we, there's a way for us to detect if the phone's been rooted before coming onto the network, so I'm figuring if the enterprise can do it, the ISP should be able to do this too. Right now, another question for our, um, probably like your pre teens your teens who are just getting these new devices, uh, they're probably signing up for their first social media accounts, you know, what are some of the privacy tips for those kids and for those parents they really need to be looking out for before they sign up for Facebook, Instagram, or Snapchat? Okay, so the first time, whenever I present in the schools, you know, grades five and sixes, I always ask the question, how many of you guys here have a social media account like Facebook and all their hands are up? I'm like, how on earth is this possible? And 
the rules are that no one under 13 should be signing up to this stuff because they can't handle what goes on online. So if there's cyber bullying going on, they can't, they don't know how to process how to deal with that. Right. So that's why they have that law. No one under 13, but they still do it anyway. So we'll, we'll see if we can give them any tips here. Um, the other tip would be probably to just add the friends that they know. There's um, there's a lot of competition that go out uh, online at the see who's got the most contacts, most friends. <laughs> right, and right. <clears throat> what's happening there is that they're adding stalkers to their list. And next thing you know, they're going to McDonald's and they're checking in, right? For, for those of you on the phone that don't know what check-in means, it's where you broadcast to the world that you just arrived at McDonald's. You just broadcast it to your contact list. So if you have any stalkers in there, they're going to know where you are almost all the time. So they know where to find you. There's um, obviously privacy pro, uh, privacy uh, checkups. There was a video I posted online on how to do a proper one if there, if anyone's interested. Um, a lot of people don't set up proper privacy in their Facebook accounts. Um, if you have a photo that has a picture of a globe next to the icon, that means you've set your pu- your picture to public, which means the whole world can see it without even being your friend. <clears throat> and they're wondering why their photos are being used in like Czech Republic for fake profiles. So you want to make sure that all that stuff is locked down. Those are some good tips, you know, especially with kids um, on like Instagram and those type of sites. And one of the things I've, I've seen with younger kids is that as soon as they sign up, there's always an adult to friend them or send a friend request. And it may not be somebody, you know, our age. It could be somebody that may be 18, 19 or 20 that those kids have no idea who that is. But, you know, they'll put up a you know some type of cool profile picture to try to get into that kid's circle almost immediately at the point when they sign up for these new websites yeah. or these social media sites. Yeah. This is where, uh, you know, like whenever we deal with predators, that's, that's the first thing they do, right? They try to, um, the term is called befriending them. They just, they act, they act and try to be like the target. So if, if they see that the target is into skateboarding, well, he might research what, what the latest boards are and post a picture of the latest Tony Hawk's uh, skateboard and say, yeah, man, I just got this. Maybe we should hang out at the skate park sometime. And they don't right. know the difference. Now with all this technology like Google um, Google Street View, they can start profiling where these people live and get familiar with their area without, without even ever going there in real life. So they need to watch out for that. Especially don't post like stupid comments. Like uh, the adults, I see the adults doing this way more than the kids. You know, they'll post a comment like, woohoo, going to Florida for a whole week. See you next Sunday. It's like they don't realize it just told the whole world that their house is empty. Right, right. So it's, some of these comments are just crazy, mind blowing. It's the people want the attention. They want to be like, you know what I'm saying? They just want to say, hey, to the world, I'm doing something that you're not doing, not knowing that they're putting themselves at risk, putting their property at risk by posting these things. There's also um, a, a lot of times the youngsters don't keep uh, privacy in mind, especially privacy of others. For example, um, say, to, say uh, I don't know, you two's in town, okay, and they're going to the concert, and little Mikey, who called in sick, is going to be going to the concert with the friend. And now the friend's tagged Mikey in in the concert pictures when he should be calling in sick. Now the boss and all his friends know about right. it. So they need to be courteous of when they're tagging their friends. Now, another thing I'm seeing a lot of on, especially Instagram when it comes to middle school kids, is like all these online quizzes. And I, I, I can tell you a personal story. A couple of days ago, my son was saying that a lot of him and his friends, like Instagram a page was getting hacked. And I'm like, okay, well, who's hacking 13 and 12 yeah. year olds? But when I looked at their accounts, they all had these little quizzes like, you know, uh, Five ways that you're my best friends, or tell me ten things that you know about me. And it has a link to these quizzes that all these kids are signing up for, and they're putting the link in their profile pages. I'm like, this has to be some type yeah. of backdoor way people are getting information from these kids Absolutely. through these quizzes. <clears throat> yeah. So I mean, for example, they'll, they'll get a quiz. You know, which Disney horse remembers remembers or resembles you most? You know, uh, these these quizzes are cute and all, but what's happening is they're getting questions like, okay, how many corners are in this image? Then they'll answer it. And the next question could be, um, what city were you born in? 
So you're like, wait, isn't that a question the bank would be asking you in one of their questions? So <clears throat> they're not realizing that the, the, that the questions they're answering is actually their most popular sign-in questions for their accounts. So they're giving them all the answers to the hackers. Wow, they, like, they're basically giving them the information to go Pretty into much. their social media accounts, and the kids Pretty don't much. even have a clue. You know, same as, uh, when, you know, especially when they're going to, um, when they go and add all these other apps, for example, um, they don't read the fine print. So if they're on Facebook and they're playing a game and they go and add the app, well, the app in small print says, this app has full access to your profile, your friends, your friends' friends, your contact information, and whatever else. And um, then they go and just provide all that to that middleman app, which could be a, which could be a scam. You know, a funny story. A funny story happened to one of my friends. There's an app out there called Badu, which is a um, a dating app. So, so some of her friends were sending her request, and she was, I guess, she was fed up of receiving them. So she just accepted it, just to, just to get it over with, right? And th- again, then read the fine print saying, you know, Badu has full access to create your account, uh, your friends list, uh, your messages, all this stuff. And within moments, her account got created on Badu. And then her whole entire network gets notified, and even including her work colleagues, saying, "Hey, you, you know, why did you join Baidu? Aren't you in a relationship?" You know, and some people are calling her up from from twenty years ago, saying, "Yeah, I had a crush on you back in high school. Maybe we should go for coffee." It's wow. Yeah, it's, it's, so they, got, they have to read the fine print on these apps. Speaking of the fine print, I'm, I'm just sitting here thinking because you know, like a ton of kids just probably receive like a. Apple, like iPod Touch or, you know, some small device where they can download apps. And, you know, a lot of times parents, you know, will allow kids to download, you know, free apps without their permission. Because, you know, most parents are like, okay, you can't download an app. There's a paid app. But if you want to download a free app, you know, go ahead and have fun. How dangerous is that? Um, I guess it depends on the app because, I mean, the the kids these days, you know, they're, they're, they're way ahead of us. Um, as far as knowledge uh, or or like to play around with these apps, especially when they go to school and their friends start telling them, yeah, download this app, it's really cool. But there are some parental controls you can install on the iPhone, for example, uh, which is called the family sharing. And so the kid can have his iPod, and whenever he wants to have a game, you have to pre-approve the download. So th- that's one way of controlling what apps get installed on the phone. But again, parents need to get up to speed with this technology because the, the kids are blowing right past them. I think another thing you do if you have like a Apple device is put your kids on your iCloud account. That way, everything they download automatically downloads to your cell phone, so you yeah. can pretty much see everything that they're they're downloading. You can play around with it. Correct. Yeah, they'll see it in there, not not on this device list. Now, Terry, just one more thing. I know that you go over like a lot of these tips with your Udemy course on like internet safety. What is a way for parents to get to your course, to sign up for your course, and get all these tons of videos and tips that you have out there to keep kids safe online? Sure. I mean, the, obviously, the easiest way is to is to my blog at the terrycutler.com. So that's T-E-R-R-Y-C-U-T-L-E-R.com. And uh, everything links out of there. So they'll be able to see the books, the, the courses, and whatever they want, the YouTube channel. There's lots of stuff on there. There's it's your the, Facebook, Twitter, on your website, or your blog as well. Correct. Yeah, there's even a, a, a video that a lot of people are, are watching right now. There's, there's over 110,000 views now. It's um, give me four minutes, and I'll tell you if your PC's been hacked. So wow. I'm getting a lot of traction on this video, and it's helping a lot of people. So. Um, that's usually a number one. Um, I give away a lot of free content, okay, especially around cyberbullying and things like that. So uh, it helps everybody get started at least, you know, before they, before they if they want to buy the course, then they can. But uh, I give away a lot of free content. So guys, you hear if you go to Terry Cutler right now, you will get a ton of free courses, videos, tips, sheets to kind of get you guys started, so you're not out there alone. And you kind of have a couple feet in front of the kids who have these devices and they're using this technology. That's great, Terry. Correct. Yeah, cause I do a lot of stuff on television and the media and, and on the news and stuff. So th- this is this 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 um, 
this topic is very hot in media. So things like how to keep your Facebook profile secure, how to look for uh, kids' behavior changes after they've joined online social media. So if you start noticing things like every time you walk past them, you know, they're hovering over the keyboard or they're hiding their phone. They don't want you to see what's going on. That's an indicator that there's something going on online. Right. So, you know, they think that just by closing down their account or shutting off the phone for the night is going to make the problem go away. But the but the problem continues while while they're not connected. Right. And just FYI, that works for adults as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. If you have an employee, you run, but you walk by that cubicle and you always see them cutting their eyes away or are you looking down or looking away that tells you there's something going on as well? Yeah. Same, as, uh, be doing. same as when, you know, because there are some parental controls you can install on the home routers, right? And if any of your kids have mobile devices, well, they're savvy enough to know that, well, hey, if mommy and daddy are limiting me on the Wi-Fi, I'm going to disconnect from the Wi-Fi, go on the 3G connection. Right. And bypass all the restrictions. So, that they're wondering why they're very tired in the morning. It's because they're texting at three o'clock in the morning with their friends. So the, the big, I guess the best tip here was to be to remove the take away their device at night and give it back to them in the morning. You know what, Terry? I think that's excellent advice because you know there are a lot of internet safety routers out there that's really hot now, and I think you know fairy parents may have this false sense of security. If they have the router and they have the Wi-Fi locked down, they don't have to worry about anything. But you're yeah. you're, you're 100 correct. They can just switch over to 3G, 4G through the cell phone tower and still do the same thing that they've been doing. And the parents wouldn't know anything about it. It would just totally circumvent the router. So you're right. You have to just basically take those devices at night to ensure they're not doing anything online. That's it. That's it. And 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 again, also teach them about you know the the online reputation. A lot of kids just post so much garbage online that they don't realize that this stuff will haunt them 10 years from now when they go and apply for a job. So the, the, the recruiters, that's the first place they look at is their social media accounts. Do they want little Tommy uh, representing their company? You know, when the guy's smoking maybe drugs or, or doing alcohol. So they have to watch what they're posting online. You know what? That brings up something, Terry, because, you know, a lot of kids that I talk to believe that, once they delete, you know, all those negative Im- images off of Facebook, Instagram, and once they kind of wipe this stuff off, that it goes away. A company that's trying to recruit someone, what are some of the ways for them to still discover all those pictures that are out there online? Well, one of the one of the ways would be that somebody else took a copy of them and wanted to extort them later on. Um, perfect example um, would be. Maybe not online, but say a, um, in, in the kids in the sixth grade were, were dating and one of them sent inappropriate photos to each other, to the other right. person. And um, people don't realize that once you send out these photos, they no longer control it. So you never know when these pictures could come back at a later time to haunt them. So same thing goes for, uh, for social media. Uh, maybe somebody in the world took a copy of that photo. They just have to right click on the photo and say save picture as, and they got it. Now, outside of the extortion, do companies have different software they can use to find certain images before they hire someone for their company? There are some reputation management firms that can pull out some of these, some of these data, but um, usually the, face, the, the Facebook network is fairly closed. Okay. So you're not going to see much photos leaking onto Google. Um, but there are ways in Facebook, which is called Facebook graphing. So you can type in photos of and then put Cedric Lewis, for example, in, in the brackets and it's look for every photo on Facebook that you've been tagged in. So th- there are some ways to, to dig up some of these photos if you think you've, you've got it all kind of thing. You know, If you deleted all your photos that you were aware of, maybe somebody else had a copy. Well, you know, that's a great tip for, like, kids uh, who are in college or getting ready to go into the workforce or even teens looking for a job is to go into Facebook and do a self-audit of yourself and see what pictures are, pictures are out there that you're tagged in so you can go ahead and clean some of that stuff up before you start the interviewing process. Yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a trick they can do also with um, how to know if their photos are being used anywhere else in the world. If you go onto your Facebook or your LinkedIn or whatever social media account you want, um, 
in a, in a new tab, open up Google, um, Google Images. And what you do is you'll drag and drop each of your images into Google and it's going to see where else in the world that this photo is being used. So that's how you know if, if people are, are stealing your photos to create fake profiles. So some of your listeners might be wondering, well, why would anybody want to create a, my, uh, create a fake profile of me? It's because what they want to do is they want to try and add all your friends back and then they're going to they're gonna try and scam them later on saying, hey, I'm in London, I've been mugged, can you send me 500 bucks? Wow. So people are, are basically hijacking people's LinkedIn profile pictures and yep. creating new sites. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, fake, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook especially. But um, I'm seeing much more of, of Facebook than LinkedIn. LinkedIn, obviously, you, you get a lot of uh, uh, fake accounts trying to add you. But you can use that exact same technique. Just drag their image into images.google.com, and it'll tell you where else it's being used. So if you get a connection request, the first thing we should do is start like researching the photo to see if that person is real right. or not. Yeah, because you'll get some photos that are looks like they've been taken with a camera from the early 2000s. You know, <laughs> right. You know, your phone can take so much better images than that. You know, there's no reason why you should have a really crappy photo online, you know. So everything's in HD. So those are some indicators that these, some of these accounts might be fake. Or if their profile is still the old format. Or, the, or if the last time they've, uh, they posted something was you know, over six months ago or a year ago. That, those are like indicators that there's something wrong with these accounts. Right. If somebody sends me a, a profile request with a beautiful girl on the other end, that's a telltale sign. Yep. Yep. It always starts with a beautiful girl. That's the problem, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it does. It does. I was like, hey, why does she want to talk to me? <laughs> uh, this has to be a hacker. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's, you know, that's a telltale sign, guys. If, if a girl is really beautiful and see your request that you have no idea who she is, more than likely there's some type of hacker that's trying to get into your circle, or into yeah. your network. Yeah. Because there are, there are some people that fall for some of these scams. One of them is called the romance scam. Um, it, it actually hits adults more, but... What happens is they fall in love with this fake profile, and then later on they're going to say, you know, I'd love to come to Canada or Chicago, and but I need money to update my papers. Can you send me $300? Or can you buy my airline tickets? And next thing you know, people are losing their, all their money because of this. Yeah, it, it definitely happens a lot. And you're starting to see it happen with the gaming industry as well, like with this Xbox Live a lot of people reach out to kids through, you know, their console, trying to get money and trying to extort them. So that's another thing for parents to look out for. If they bought like these new gaming systems for the holidays, that that could be a way that hackers could target your kid. Yeah, especially the, their profiles. Some some kids po- post um, too much information in their profiles, and there are ways to find out where the other person lives through the Xbox system. Um, through using some, some um, they're called land analysis tools. And one of the scams, I don't know if you've heard of this, it's called swatting. You've heard of this? No. It's What's where, swatting? it's where, say you're playing a game like Call of Duty. And what happens is, say one of them's a sore loser, they'll find out where the other person lives based on how much information they put in their profile. And they'll call the police and say, there's this guy, he's, he's locked up in the house, he's got a gun, he's got hostages. Next thing you know, the SWAT team shows up while he's playing Call of Duty. So that's where oh, you got the term goodness. swatting from. Oh, my goodness. You got to watch what you put in the profiles. Well, hey, Terry, you gave us a lot of great uh, you know, information on things we need to get to work on like right now. We really appreciate you know you being on the show. And they need to go to, is it terrycutler.com is the website? Correct. Yeah, everything launches from there. All right. Well, best of luck to you, Terry. Thanks for having me. I really enjoyed it. Hey, guys, I hope you really enjoyed the episode with Terry. Make sure to go to his great, great website, terrycolor.com. He has a lot of white papers, a lot of PDFs, a lot of tips on how to really monitor your kids' social media. And he also has an outstanding Udemy course where he really breaks down how to do these tips with all his brilliant lectures, with all the brilliant videos to go with those lectures. It is very, very affordable. So I highly recommend it. And also make sure you go to iTunes and rate this episode of Digital Parent Podcast and let us know what you think. Until next time.